Hi, uh, Miss Knowles walked in, then she turned around and walked out. Um, oh, she's in the conference room. All right, so she's in the conference room. All right. I will in a bit. Um, uh, Rhonda Ives is going to is going to zoom in. Um, the problem is the room isn't. There we go. We're good. All right. Very good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, this is file 231148, people of East September Knowles. Miss Knowles, your attorney, Miss Halleck, and you'll see when you start to talk to her, she's not feeling well at all. But because we have a hard time contacting you, I didn't want to move or adjourn this case. I was very pleased when I saw that you were here. I'm gonna put you in a breakout room so you can talk privately with your lawyer. And when the prosecutor gets here, we will then address this case. Okay. So click the button that says join. Hello, David. I'm here for September Knowles, who's she, on the phone with Halleck. She's in the, the breakout room right now. And uh, so. So the for my purposes, the offer has been the same since day one. Well, uh, she got arrested. I lodged her. The very next day, we did the attorney pretrial for September in September. And we resolved all of her other cases. I gave her some jail time. I zeroed everything out that I could. She wanted to continue her plea of not guilty to this case. So it was set for last pretrial today. What is the offer? Disturbing the peace. And that was a very generous gift as it was. So to not take it is, I, I don't know the theory behind that. If the defense has an, a reason, I don't know it. Uh, but in considering what happened, the facts of that. And the, well, I, the affidavit is not very compelling. No, right? and, and that's why I thought. Well, let's wait. I don't want to do any ex parte yeah. stuff without him. Hello, Luke. What have you got? A um, salmon colored shirt with matching socks. Dave <laughs> always looks better than I do. I didn't know he's going to be here. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> it looks like it without opening them, which I'm going to try to do right now. It looks like we do have digital evidence. Melissa, Dave is here to do the pretrial on September. It's going to take 60 seconds to close the room. Um, there she is. Um, let's address the case formally. We'll just leave Ms. Knowles where she is right now for a second. Luke, do you need me for something? I had Antonio Tate on the docket and I'm not... Check with Laura. I don't know. I don't think it's on there. Okay. Okay. I'll see what the yeah. deal is. Um, this is file 231148SM, people of the state of Michigan versus September Knowles. Mr. David Marvin, the county prosecuting attorney, is here. Ms. Halleck is feeling very poorly and she's agreed to appear by Zoom, which we appreciate. Ms. Knowles was here a little early. So I put her in a breakout room so she could talk with her lawyer because Melissa wasn't able to be here. We were here earlier at the end of August, first part of September. Miss Knowles again showed up on a uh, uh, wrong date. She got lodged and I set an attorney pretrial for September 1st. We took care of every case, but this one. Um, we had some ordinance cases, some state statute cases, a number of cases were dismissed. Defendant, defendant continued her plea of not guilty in this case, and the matter was set for a last pretrial. The complaint alleges that on or about June 10th in the village of Centerville that the defendant did misuse a 911 telephone service for other than an emergency purpose. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 180 days in jail and a fine of up to $5,000. You're also charged with being a disorderly person at the Centerville Shell Mart, um, Johnny's Market. And that's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 90 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. This 
originally, I think, was in Judge Patterson's court and ended up in mine. Um, anyway, Mr. Marvin has indicated here that his offer is the same it has always been. Dismiss the 911 portion of this for a plea to a disorderly person. Uh, Miss Halleck, have you discussed that with your client? I did, Your Honor. I had conveyed that it was a disturbing the peace. That was my mistake. Yeah, I guess the same thing, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, it is disturbing willing, the She would be willing to plead guilty to that um, offer today, indicating she did engage in an argument at Shell with one of the workers, um, a Jackie Moore that was there. Um, and it was in a public place over some property that um, she believed that he had taken from her um, and that she was at the Shell gas station. She, um, she was refusing to leave. She has explanations, but again, that's not part of the, the plea. Part of the well, plea was at the Shell gas station in a public place arguing with Mr. Moore, um, who was an employee at the Shell gas station. Is that true, Ms. Knowles? You're going to be willing to plead to disturbing the peace? Yes. All right. Let me tell you a few things. Disturbing the peace, the way it's charged here, is a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 90 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. The prosecutor will dismiss the un improper 911 calls. He does have the calls. Uh, that's a 180 day offense, which would be dismissed. If you plead to this charge, you'll be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or a jury. Do you understand? Yes. You had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Ms. Halleck is here uh, to represent you, but also <laughs> have to your own choosing if you wished. If you had a trial, you'd have a right to have any of the witnesses for or against you subpoenaed to come to court so they could be questioned under oath. You would have the right to take the witness stand yourself and testify, but you don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury could not hold your silence against you and you have the right to be presumed innocent until they were able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt if they could do that. You understand? Yes. Mr. Marvin, you complete the offer, can uh, agree the offer is to disturbing the peace? Yes. All right. Uh, were you in the Shell Station here in Centerville on June 10th, sometime just after midnight? Yes. Why were you there? Um, I was trying to get transportation. I just stopped there to use the restroom and I, was, I just got out of jail and I was trying to get a ride. All right. And so what had you got, well, you got out of jail and then you went to the Shell station. Oh, and how did you get into it with Mr. Moore? Um, a gentleman walked into the store and called me a cunt and other disrespectful names. And I wasn't even doing anything but sitting at the subway side, which Jack gave me permission to do so. So I could use the phone and try to get transportation, my phone. Um, yeah, I he offered me donuts and then he ended up acting freaking out on me and I don't know, but I, I do well, when, the, when the officer got there, you threw up all over the floor in one of the aisles. You were drunk and you had a fifth of no, I, I I wasn't. I just got out of jail. I, well, I purchased it. The bar I, says I, I, you were very intoxicated and you were in possession of a fifth of vodka. And you had thrown up all over the floor in one of the aisles. Um, so that's not good. Yes. Yeah, she said she she also had been in a not healthy relationship where she had not been 
able to leave the home and go to the doctors that she normally would go to is what she had indicated. She's off medications that caused her to feel very ill. She had just recently purchased alcohol, but had not. She remembers all of this incident very clearly, which to me speaks to her not being overly intoxicated. Well, this is the, I have some skepticism. She was drunk at Pizza Hut. She was drunk at um, I understand that. Mancino's. And now here we are at midnight with a fifth of vodka and she throws up in the aisleway and gets into it with the clerk. And she calls central dispatch five 36 times. 36 times. 36 times. Well, I have 36 sound bites that have been oh, I was, uh, I was, That part of it is dismissed. So she's gaslighting the fact that she's drinking to excess and endangering herself and possibly others. But so did you know the guy, Mr. Moore? Uh, yes. Um, he he uh, showed up at my residency one day and, and helped us all to my canoe and kayak trailer. And um, so I don't know if that is the reason why he was short with me after being nice to me at the store. I don't know. He's he's an odd one. All right. Was this Jackie Lee Moore Sr. or Jr.? I'm sorry? Was it Jackie Moore Sr. or Jr.? I don't know. How old was he? Um, My age it, or your age? It is that, it is that Jack, the same Jack Moore. I just, I, I don't it's know. Junior, it's what? Junior. It's Junior. And uh, I've had experience with him. He's got his own issues she's correct there oh everybody would deal with as their own issues so all right so here we are we should have taken care of this on september 1st but we weren't able to do that so i'll accept your plea so i don't want to get your exact address but where are you staying um i'm just staying with some family right now i'm i'm actually I'm going to get in touch with the TRPD today so I can get into um, 321 Miller and get some property out of there. I would not be the least bit surprised. You told me that the last time. I, I, think, all that I think all that property is gone. Um, that writ of eviction was several weeks ago. I would be amazed if she just left her stuff in there, but if she well, did. The last, time I went there, the last time I went there, all my property was there. So, and, and I had the, I had TRP, um, cop cam and everything. So I can, <laughs> so I can still get my property. All right. Well, I'm in favor of that, but where, where are you, what town are you staying in? Um, St. Joseph and Kalamazoo. You mean St. Joe, the city of St. Joe? Oh, I'm sorry, Centerville. I, I, I thought you said county. I misunderstood you. All right. What town are you staying in? Um, Portage and, and um, Centerville. Who's in Centerville? Um, my sister. All right. Um. <coughs> Mr. Marvin, you got anything to add? No, I do not. September, we're all worried about your status. You have that assault case where there was an allegation of very serious assault. Prosecutor's office is proceeding with that case. The defendant is in jail. It could end up in a trial. So on one hand, you're a key witness in one of their important cases. On the other hand, about twice a week, I get a complaint about you making a nuisance of yourself. And this is bad. Um, but I just, you just did about four days in jail. If you'd pled at that time, I would have just run it concurrent with the other stuff. You already owe me $125 on October 5th on another case. I think you spent, you got arraigned in jail on July 5th. 
Wow, you didn't post bond until July 18th. And you got arrested again on August 31st. And I let you out, so you got July 4th. So you spent 14 days in July and one day in August. So 15 days jail credit 15, that ought to be sufficient. I'm waiving your fine and I'm waiving Melissa's attorney fee. Oh, well, she certainly deserves it, particularly since she's very ill and she's here right now on your behalf. $125 state minimum fee. Uh, the other payment is due. I'm going to make that due by December 5th. Have you had any luck finding a job? Uh, yes, I just got uh, hired, or I, I can start at Morgan and Olson um, anytime. I spoke to the head plant manager, so, and they start at 20 bucks an hour. All right. Well, I hope so. Um, How about, I don't even know what to say. Um, you could use a probation just to help get your life on track, but these are minor offenses. And you're gonna, I'm gonna find you in a ditch somewhere, um, frozen or something. You just need to get yourself in order. And a fifth of vodka is not the answer to your problems. But you've already done 15 days in jail. I don't need to beat you up anymore for this. You showed up on time, which I appreciate. And uh, so you owe $125 by December 5th. And you're barred from the Shell Station in Centerville for one year. If you go in there, you're in contempt of court. All right, Ms. Knowles, I wish you the best. I don't wish bad stuff would keep happening to you, but some of this are just bad choices that you're making. All right, you're free to go. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Melissa, for your help. Thank you. All right, Ms. Knowles, you're good to go. Would you bring in Brandy Brown? Yeah. 